So I've just subscribed to a newsletter of a woman that I think is absolutely phenomenal in terms of the intelligence of her mind. I haven't had the opportunity to read her book more than a few pages that I've seen of influence on Amazon where they openly allow you to take a look at something before you buy. I forget what it's called, but I think it's called Look Inside. The writing was incredibly immaculate in terms of its visual communication and what it talked about. It definitely raised questions in my mind immediately about what she was thinking, what she was feeling, and how she was doing at the time. People are interested in knowing who Michael is, but Michael is unclear in those few pages that I read. And openly, what I think about when I look at this website of this individual author is who is doing her social media, who is handling her website, because it's pretty marvelous. But there's some pieces missing, and I wonder why would you have a comment page if a person can't comment on a page? Or are they controlling that and blocking people inappropriately? Sometimes a 20-year-old groupie who does your stuff instead of a seasoned professional like me doesn't know what they're doing. They might be blocking you out of millions of dollars, and that's a sad thing for a person who tries to use young people to raise them up. A young person doesn't know how to raise you up. They don't know where to direct you to the Internet and network and probably you can get enough on your own name at this time but I'm not seeing that with you all over the place in what you're doing and hopefully I'm not going to mention the lady's name because I think she's phenomenal rarely am I that impressed with a person's profile it's fairly well written but I swear to god I saw that she was some sort of lawyer unless of course I've confused her with another famous woman who has similar looks in her I've also seen some people that my uh, government uh, protector wants me to look at and the one she showed me is absolutely stunning, but that's not the point. It's about what's going on in between the ears that's most interesting to a man of my age, my station, my generation, my upbringing from a gentleman's household. My late father, who died four days before his 85th birthday, was a consummate gentleman all the time. Even though he struggled with alcoholism, even though he smoked occasionally, even though he was a marvelous wife beater early in their marriage because my mother was a motherfucking handful. And openly she knew how to push his buttons. And as a child growing up in that area, I definitely have empathy and I am a sensitive person from understanding that when I walked in the house, I could automatically tell by the time I was in high school how many drinks my mom had had, how many drinks my dad had had. And the sad thing about alcohol is it brings out the real you sometimes. Or the real you at that moment of time in your life when you're under incredible stress. I know for me that when I drink, and I learned to drink at bars and sing karaoke in Japan, that I'm more of a Pepe Le Pew kind of guy when that happens. It's one of the reasons I don't drink much. It also doesn't do well in my system. I'm very particular about the frou-frou drinks I like to joke about that I learned about in college when we used to watch Black Light Movie Night with the friends of mine who were part of my Taekwondo club. Everybody would come over to the house. We'd make probably tacos or something, some sloppy joes. I can't remember. Sometimes we'd order Chinese, and we'd just sit there and watch Jackie Chan films. A lot of times without the audio at all, just subtitles, we'd fast forward to the fight scenes and really enjoy those. But openly, you know, I'm a strawberry daiquiri guy, a pina colada guy, a sweet wine guy, and I can take a dry wine and put any type of Sprite in it to make it better for me. But generally speaking, I stay away from those carbonation drinks because there's too much salt, there's too much caffeine in them, and they're just not right for me. I am totally a cold tea drinker all the way. And even though I was offered plenty of motherfucking iced coffee in Japan, I always had to practice the rule of let them pour it and don't sip it in, a thing of it. And there are certain etiquettes, cultural etiquettes that are, are impressive around the world. But what I'm marveled by by this woman, Evie Girl, is how incredibly intelligent she is. And I just watch these interviews and I'm just monkeyed sometimes by some of the inexcusable questions that she's asked when she's so motherfucking brilliant. And I just sit there and go, I'd like to interview her. So I mocked up something, I designed something based on things I've done in the past to try to ask her through LinkedIn, uh, through a silly question at first, but somewhat sincere, the truth. Because when a man has lost his wife of 20 years, when he waits 10 years for the first kiss from the girl he really loves, and she refuses, then he's got to find the next best thing. And the sad thing is when the next best thing is the, one of the best things in America.